so there's just all kinds of ways. Sometimes in the booth, but very rarely. Um, just up at the studio, you know. Yeah, sometimes we'll meet each other. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then like a lot of times, like the director will be like, "Oh, you guys should meet because yeah. you're the same thing." If you see names, you'll recognize names. You'll be like, "Oh, who's this person?" And then, yeah. Yeah. But usually, where we actually get to know each other. Because we get we hang out. Much. Because we hang out and get drunk together. Yeah. It's concerns. It's the way you guys get to know each other. It's it's right. It's right. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, love and solidarity. It's so awesome to see women in the industry that have solidarity because there's some industries where there isn't solidarity and you see them tearing each other down and it's just kind of sucky. But anyways, my question has three parts, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, first part is, what are some disadvantages or dare I say inequalities that you face? Um, for example, you mentioned how in the very beginning when you started, there was just less female roles and there was just not enough. Um, another thing you mentioned was, um, sorry I'm looking out, but uh, right. can you think of any? I would say uh, very rarely are men required to uh, work as a on cue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, they're not normally turned on by fighting. Uh -huh. They're not normally uh, turned on by like, they don't have sexy breaths when they turn their head. <laughs> that is an inequality. Now, I don't care. <laughs> I, like, it doesn't bother me. But it's certainly not balanced. You know, is there anything that's just like the first thing that comes to mind? I, there's definitely some stuff. Um, I de also, just the fact that like women have to sound like babies. Yeah. Like, I don't work as much in anime. When I do, it tends to be like, you know, luckily there's characters like Sailor Jupiter or whatever, but she's kind of like the tomboy, and then like Boruto, like I, I tend to play like boys because they can't fathom the fact that a woman can have like a register of her voice that's not like, oh my gosh, guys, I'm a high school student, I talk like this. And it's like, we don't all sound like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my natural speaking voice, I get it. <laughs> they have and also this is just what I've heard from some other people 
because I don't know anything about things. But for conventions, I've also heard that a lot of times the male guests will get offered more than the female guests. Mm -hmm. I was like, bring that up. But the, the that is the fandom. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, like you have Monica Real, who's like had more anime voice roles than any woman on the planet. Yeah, like li more than any Japanese seiyu, more than any oh. anyone. Yeah. She literally has had the most. If you put her next to like Vic Mignogna, who's great, don't get me wrong, but like name 10 of his top, right? You can't. And he will always have a crazier, longer line. There is something about the fandom, and sadly, a lot of it is women yeah. that flock to the men and ignore the women that are playing these roles. It's true. Yeah. Um, so because of that, conventions will be like, oh, well, we want these people to come, even though there are a ton of us ladies that have more roles that are stronger and, to be perfectly honest, better characters yeah. <laughs> uh, that don't get the same opportunity because of like, I've even heard people say like, oh yeah, like like a woman will like be invited to a con and they're like, oh we can only offer you like this much, and then but then she'll talk to a guy friend. They're like, yeah, no, they right out the gate offered me like double the price that they told her they couldn't oh, pay her. Yeah. Like just like big discrepancy. So the wage gap is definitely real. Yeah, yeah. well yeah, that's real. Yeah. Well saying? yeah, I guess the last thing that I'll add is just that um, I think <laughs> I, I play a lot of male roles as well, and I said. The difference is that the male roles are so much more thought out. Like they have so much more depth, they have so much more history, like they took the time to really flesh out this character. And then my female roles have a tendency, and there are exceptions for sure. Shiri Kim, Snow White with Red Hair, Juliet, Romeo with Juliet, like <coughs> there are exceptions, but for the most part, it's just like I'm a hot girl, look at my bouncing dudes! Like, I'm a hot boy! Like, and there's no thought put into why she would be that way. It is getting better. Um, yeah, it's for sure getting better. Um, but yeah, there's a difference with that. So it's just a couple. What was your Yeah, that was just part one, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, we have a few other people. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, pulling yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, go to the end. Yeah, go to the end. Yes. So no pressure. So out of all the uh, all the anime roles you guys have done, what is your favorite funniest line you can never get out of your head? I have one. <laughs> I said it yesterday. I mean, I have a couple. Uh, mine is um, Tamama in Sergeant Frog. Oh, yay! And it never will leave my head because it was my... So we have like reference lines. Oh, yeah. um, oh I have a new one too. Okay, so I'll do Tamama's and then I'll do Mineta's. Um, so Tamama's uh, uh, hey everybody, guess what? I think I have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> and with Mineta in My Hero Academia, his, my uh, reference line for him is, So, I got these sticky balls. <laughs> I have a few when we have children in here. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just self -lead. Uh, okay, so my favorite that I ever wrote is in Penny and Stocking, but Monica Stocking said it. And it was, you keep talking, but all I hear is syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, uh, cock a doodle mine. Mm. And that's one. And repent mother. Mm. <laughs> is another one. And then, so what happens if I accidentally mm the janitor? <laughs> So far, 
which one do you maybe connect with the most, or which one made you go, wow, I love what I do, just because I got to play this character, you know, something like that. Um, <laughs> Sale Phantom Lime is by far my favorite <laughs> character because he has so much depth. Again, my male character, of course. Uh, so much depth has gone through so much, and I get to do an English accent. That's pretty dope. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> dope. Uh, so you get to work with Michael. That's great too. Yeah, my Jay and Michael Tatum, my work husband. Um, and then the two characters that are most like me that just mean a lot to me that. Uh, it would be uh, Natsuki in Summer Wars and uh, Maho in Beck. I just did a Celine Miller. It would sound like, like if I did that thing, it wouldn't work as well because it would just sound like you're saying, oh yeah, it, it's a Celine Miller. Like, <laughs> a one Celine. of many. A Celine. <laughs> uh, my favorite, I'm biased, but it's like Sailor Jupiter because when I grew up, she was my favorite character and I related to her a lot. She's also, I was like, I was like five, five or five, six in fourth grade. Like I went through puberty and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> I did the opposite. I did puberty and went, out of my way. But yes, puberty is real fun for girls, especially because we got through it sooner. And, and you're like, like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm but, um, yeah, so I, like, I grew up and I was, like, much taller than everyone, and so I was kind of, like, awkward and all that, and then I also like to play soccer, and I played hockey, but I, you know, so they're like, oh, she's a dude, and they was, like, in front of me and called, like, call me a boy, but at the same time, I'm like, but I also like, you know, ice skating, and I like, you know, I like boys, Sailor Moon, and I like Sailor Moon, <laughs> and so it's like, the, you know, like, so Sailor Jupiter kind of has that, like, the, the duality of the masculinity and the femininity, and she's, she embraces them both, and I, that was really cool for me to see growing up, so being able to voice her, is super chill. <laughs> super chill. Super chill. Um, I was okay. So like one that I was acting, I was like, this is really cool to be me. Um, Junko, because like I mean, it's all these different personalities. That's amazing. That's super fun. Um, and to be chosen to be a character that has all the personalities is a is very complimentary. Yeah. Um, I got to meet some really cool people on Switchblade, so that was fun. Um, as far as being like the most like me in Tokyo Cool, <laughs> just as cool. Just as cool. Uh, I'm a bartender, the redheaded bartender. Her name is Eve, something like that. Uh, it's not a whole lot, but it isn't just me. Like if I was a ghoul, that's that would be me. That's kind of Toka for me too. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I was uh, like Mike had asked me to watch some of it because I had to direct myself in LA for part of it, and. Uh, I was watching it and my husband walked by and you know, just looked at the screen for like two seconds and he was like, you have purple hair one? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was like, so just like, be yourself. And I was like, okay. And then uh, Monica wrote it and she's like, oh good, I wrote that for you. <laughs> Perfect. It, it all worked out accordingly. So that was, yeah. Oh, and Brina, could I hear you do chopper just once? Yeah, okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Whenever you reach 30, 40, and up, and um, like with female roles, they, they mostly just phase you out, and you don't really get the elder female perspective in most live action films. Do we see that in um, voice acting, and what can we do to change the industry to allow an elderly female population and to heighten their voice? <laughs> 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 and do we need to fight? <laughs> Is that even when you're older, like in your 30s, like 40s, and 50s, like you can so still I'm play. Yeah, she looks really she good. Looks good. Her age. <laughs> uh, you can still play and younger. Dress. But what would be awesome is if they actually had meaningful characters uh, that were older. Because I feel like you see that. Uh, well, in anime, I feel like it's all teenagers all the time. But like I know with film, especially, you you see older men all the time, and like they still exist after. 40 and like with women it's just like oh they're, they're just dead like women are they just die at 40 and there's like nothing else they keep them in a basement and yeah. <laughs> like, All right, come on in. unless you're here in there 
Helen Mirren, right. and then everyone still wants you. You still have to look kind of a bikini. Yeah. You can still look kind of a bikini looking year round. Yeah, then you'll feel Or like Dame Judi Dench, because would you try to like ferret, ferret her into a little box? She should probably I bite you. Really yeah. Me too. I had a dream that Judi Dench. Were they all violent? Because I dreamt that Judi Dench would be. Judy Dench beat the crap out of me behind a McDonald's with brass knuckles in my dream. <laughs> because I, it was around the time, it was like Doctor Who where they had a, it was like Dana Shannon. Yeah, still like Okay, so mine, mine, she wanted to be the next companion for Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor Who. So that would be amazing! I think it was after Rose left, and so in my head, I guess my dream was like, hey, you could be it. So in my dream, I was with David Tennant at a McDonald's. <laughs> and Judy Dench was like, no, you can't. And was like, oh, can you come outside, please? And I was like, sure, Judy Dench, she would eat the crap out of me. So it's, it's really cool because apparently it had, like you said, it reawoken, this, it re yeah. revitalized the series, and now there's a bunch of, like, there's just been. So I mean, I, I can't take credit because I come up with the series. You can totally take credit. We can give it That's credit. Right right yeah. 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 to say thank you for all your contributions. Uh, I'm what you would call a major otaku. Uh, this question is for all of you. Um, when doing the voice dubbings, how do you go about determining just what kind of voice to use for specific characters? I feel like whichever ones I think the fans are going to hate the most. Right. Yeah. Like, stick with that. What if people really hate? That's what yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> it's usually a, a collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then just one more for. Oh, oh no, that was not a real answer. Um, yeah, right. not really when you were <laughs> doing when you were doing the uh, dub voice for Chopper on One Piece, where did you get the inspiration for the voice that you use? Since it's such well, a high pitched one, and I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It turns out uh, the Japanese seiyu of Chopper is the same seiyu as Pikachu. And I was obsessed with Pikachu whenever I was younger, and so I basically just... Emulated Pikachu. Yeah. I awesome. Emulated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last question! <laughs> All right, I'll make it short and sweet, and then you guys are short on time. Um, no, just make it really good. All right. <laughs> Being voice actors, is there any project that you wish you could have been a part of or think you really could have contributed a lot to past, present, or anything like that? All of them. <laughs> Everyone would have been better. All of them. Yeah. Uh, also, um, have we been able to do 
you all of them, we would have so much more money. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing with being an actor is that if, if you can't handle rejection, you, the entire life of an actor, I don't care how famous you get, there is nothing but rejection unless you become like Brad Pitt. Like, you will have nothing but rejection. And then he got rejected by his own life. Oh. Wow. Oh.